The models that this video pertains to are the 43, 50, 55, and 65 PFL 5604 slash F7 space A or slash F7 space C, as well as the 43, 50, 55, and 65 PFL 5704 backslash F7 space A. Welcome to the third video in our series focused on setting up a Philips 2020 Android television. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the home screen and orient you on how the Android television organizes information, as well as pointing out where key settings may be located. This is the home screen. This is what you will see after initial setup. And the way that Android organizes information is as follows. This top row is kind of your bookmarks or favorites bar. Um, what is here now, as we have just set up the television, are the pre-installed applications, as well as an icon for live television. There is also the Play Movies and TV store and a how-to app. This is gonna be a very useful application for getting help or calling our call center if you have any difficulties. And there are a few shortcuts in this application that I'll point out to you that will be very useful to you as well, potentially. Now, the key applications that you either install on this television or that come pre-installed, for example, Netflix, they will get their own row. And you can see Netflix is the first row. And the content that you will see here will be tailored to your login and your preferences. Now, since this TV was just set up, these are just the generic recommendations. They are not tied to my account because I haven't actually logged in yet. But you do see that uh, you know each application does have a row potentially, as does YouTube. Now, when you first set up your television, this is a very useful row as well if you're trying to quickly find some of the more popular applications. This apps spotlight row uh, will typically show you the most popular applications that are out there in the Android TV world. So if you're looking for, uh, as you see on screen, Disney Plus or HBO Now, YouTube TV, etc., um, this is a quick way for you to find some of the key applications and install them. And in the next video, we're going to show you how to install all those different applications, how to delete applications, and how to customize this screen. This particular video, we're just going to orient you on it. Um, and then, of course, on the last row, you do have some recommendations that are coming from the Google Play Music Store. An important icon is this bottom one, um, which we'll go through in more detail in the next video. This icon lets you customize the channels. So if you wanted to remove one of these particular preview channels, you could actually do that here. Um, and it will take you straight to the customization section of the setup menu. And in that menu, you can do a lot of different customizations, anything from removing applications, adding applications, or reordering them. So that is the basic layout of this grid that greets you when you set up your television. At the very top of the screen, you do have an area that is essentially devoted to the Google Assistant. If you're not wanting to press the button on the remote and talk into the microphone, you can also click here and speak into the microphone on the remote, and it will respond to your commands. And if you're just not into speaking or you didn't pair the remote, don't want to pair the remote, then you can just type a search here. Um, into Google Assistant and just tell it what you want it to do and it will respond as well. Moving to the right, this is an icon that you will use if you have different peripherals connected or if you're wanting to watch live TV. This is uh, the inputs section and clicking on that will show you all of the different inputs that the television has. Um, as of this moment, there's nothing connected to the TV. There is a Blu-ray player sitting here in the shot, but it's not plugged in, so the television doesn't recognize that it's there. But if it were connected, then whatever input it was connected to would be um, highlighted white as the channels icon is, and you would be able to tune to that input and see that particular device. The channels input takes you straight to the tuner that the television uh, has. So if you have programmed either an antenna signal or a direct cable signal, that's a cable signal coming out of a wall jack with no cable box between the wall jack and your television, clicking on channels will take you straight to the tuner. 
And then finally, we have a couple of other icons that may be important for you. One is the Wi-Fi status. So if you've connected this uh, television via Wi-Fi or if you've used the Ethernet connection on the back of the television to connect it to a router, this will give you an indication that you are connected. Clicking on it will pull up more information related to the network. It will tell you how you're connected, uh, you're connected wirelessly and which wireless network you're on. Uh, I will allow you to add another network. And there are a couple of other settings in here. If you had connected using an Ethernet connection, then down here where Ethernet says not connected, it would say connected. And then up on wireless, it would not say connected. So you have a shortcut into your wireless settings should you ever need them. And then this is probably the most important icon on the home screen. Um, this is where all of the settings for the television are. So we went through this in the second video in the series because clicking on settings after initial setup allowed you to name the television for the purposes of Chromecast um, so that the television has a name that you see on your network when you go to cast to it. Um, but you'll note here that there are a number of other settings in here from the network and internet to your account and sign in and I'll obviously uh, blur that out when the video goes out live. Um, but you also have a very detailed menu here for device preferences. I'm not going to go into a tremendous amount of detail in this video. I just want to orient you uh, a little bit as to how the menu is set up. The next video in the series, we will go into a number of key settings in detail and show you how to use them and how to make correct choices for your particular setup. Um, but some settings in here that might be important to you. Um, obviously power and the sound settings if you're trying to change the different sound features and, and so forth. Um, customizing the home screen, customizing the screensaver, and accessibility settings if you want the television talkback feature to either be enabled or disabled if it somehow got enabled. Um, and that's a feature that for people that are visually impaired that still want to make use of televisions, the television will actually speak every single menu item that's on screen as you highlight it. So it sort of orients you where you are using your uh, sound rather than your eyes. So those are some of the key settings that you find here. And then this is an area that may also matter to you. It's remotes and accessories. If you're going to pair this television to a wireless device that's not the remote, for example, a wireless Bluetooth soundbar or wireless Bluetooth headphones, this is how you put the television into pairing mode. So you hit add accessory and then you put your other device into pairing mode. You'll see it show up here. You can select it and add it to the television. So a very short overview of what you see on the home screen and kind of how it all works. And on the next video, I'm going to actually take you through a detailed how to customize the home screen and add to it, take away from it, add apps, delete apps, etc. So check back in for the fourth video in our series if you're looking for more information re related to customization. The video after that will be a detailed look at some of the key settings involved in connecting peripherals and customizing your picture settings. So if you're looking for information on either of those two topics, check out the next two videos in the series. Thanks for watching.